The M2 MacBook Pro and M2 Mac Mini have just hit the shelves and as usual, there's gonna be a lot of excitement out there in the media and here on YouTube as well when it comes to Apple products. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is not the channel for overexcitement, but I did buy one of these products. And if you are considering one of these products, I hope this video helps you. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. I already have the M2 MacBook Air, which has been an amazing laptop. I reviewed it here in the channel, but my current workhorse here is the M1 Max MacBook Pro, completely maxed out apart from storage. So let's talk about that first actually. And there's no point in me just regurgitating what Apple just released in their very low key announcement. I think it was very unusual, right? But here's my take on the M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros. We already know how good the M1 Pro and M1 Max were when it comes to laptops, Apple are killing it. So Apple saying that we're getting 40% increase in performance is nuts. Some workflows are more like 20% increase, but still that is nothing short of amazing, I, I think anyway. But when processing something in your current machine only takes a few seconds or maybe even a couple of minutes, that 40% increase can be kind of meaningless. In other words, don't let the marketing fool you. This is clearly a case of diminishing returns. Straight off the bat, if you already have an M1 Pro or M1 Max, and like me, you're thinking, it's already a rocket, right? It's, it's bloody fast. Then I think you and I can both sit this one out, no problems. But if you are really pushing your current M1 machine and that extra, even if it's just 20% increase in performance means you're gonna be more productive and therefore increase your own revenue or something like that, then it's a no brainer, right? I'm, I'm always gonna prioritize your, your business output more than anything else. But I can't imagine there will be a lot of you out there making the M1 Pro or M1 Max sweat. Maybe the M1 OG. Do let me know though, right? If you have an M1 Pro or M1 Max MacBook Pro that is already struggling for your workflow, or maybe you do have the OG M1 MacBook, do let me know. Are you looking at this M2 upgrade now? And there you go, first minute of this video and you already got a recommendation, right? But that's because it's a very easy decision for me. I've used the M1 Pro and I'm currently using the M1 Max here and I know how powerful they are. There hasn't been a single time last year when I thought, hmm, I wish this thing was a bit more powerful. I wish it would go faster. It's handling my work like it's nothing. I did buy this machine to last for more than one year. So that is the main reason I didn't upgrade this time. The other reason, if I'm honest with you, is the price. Apple immediately makes you feel like your current machine is obsolete, right? I've been beaten before by the marketing machine. There's just no way I'm gonna write off 4,000 pounds investment in less than a year. I bought this in January last year, so about a year. And look at this, it is laughable what Apple offers us as a trade-in. It's only been 12 months since I bought this machine and it's in pristine condition here, not a single scratch on it. And they wanna give me 1400 pounds for it. It's like, nah, thanks. <laughs> if I do sell it, it will be privately. But for me, you know, it's a business asset and I can't just write it off like that when the new M2 Max would give me very little benefit. And what do I mean by very little benefit? <laughs> well, I do think that a slightly better Wi-Fi or double the speed of Wi-Fi will be better for me and maybe HDMI that can support 8K displays is gonna be great from a future proofing perspective. But if I think about it, right, 8K displays are super expensive right now and you'd have to sit quite far back to enjoy them. So no point for me yet. Also, I don't compile huge projects with millions of lines of code in Xcode and I don't render complex animations. I render 4K videos, <laughs> you know, that's it. I barely hear this fan go on this machine. I've even been able to do my work on the M2 MacBook Air when I was traveling. So the M2 Max as a geek and as a tech lover is, is a really exciting machine. It gets me, you know, really excited. The numbers themselves are like 67 billion transistors, that's 10 billion more than the current M1 Max, 400 gigs of memory bandwidth, which is, you know, crazy. And you can go up to 96 gig of RAM. It's a marvel of technology, don't get me wrong. And I'm looking forward to seeing what people can really create with it. And actually some of you may have noticed that it is still a five nanometer technology chip. In other words, it's not really the latest technology chip, but I also think that the majority of you wouldn't really care about it. Personally, I like to see something newer. Again, if something that is gonna last a few years, it would have been nice. Personally, I don't need anything faster than what I've got right now. But if you've been saving up and waiting for the M2 MacBook Pro, Man, I'm stoked for you. You know, that's an incredible machine you're about to get. But if you're like me and you already have a rocket that is performing perfectly well, then let's continue to enjoy it, right? There's absolutely no need to panic every time Apple releases a new product. What I am slightly more excited about is the new M2 Mac Mini. 
I've had the M1 Mac Mini here in the studio and he saved my bacon several times last year. It's just the base model actually, the M1 Mac Mini I've got is, you know, is, is the cheapest one you can get, but he was able to run my workflow for a few videos in 2021. I lost my Intel i9 laptop at the time, so the M1 Mac Mini was a savior because I needed to get something cheap and quick. It totally coped with my videos, no issues. I actually had a video editor to come and help me here last year and he was editing 4K videos on the M1 Mac Mini using Final Cut Pro with all my plugins, no issues there at all. And before I talk about the specs I went for and why, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, that's fine. Just let me know why you didn't like it and I'm always looking to improve. If this is your first time here, have a butchers, a look around the channel, and if you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed. I'm here at least once a week with a new down-to-earth tech video for you. Not just Apple stuff, by the way, so if you like your tech, you'll be in good company here. So I did order the M2 Mac Mini. I went for the base model again, 600 bucks. I think that's a steal. 650 here in the UK because we like getting ripped off. But I am really intrigued to see if it would perform as well or better than my M2 MacBook Air, which I absolutely love. I already know it's gonna be faster than my M1 Mac Mini here, but I wanna see by how much. So I will be comparing them both side by side because I suspect a lot of you would be interested to see, you know, how well the M1 still performs because the prices will come down and for your workflow, that might be a better buy. And I'm not just gonna be doing the boring cliche of video editing because I appreciate that not everyone is a content creator, but like I did last year with the M2 MacBook Air review, I wanna try a few different workflows so you, maybe as a student or as a graphic designer, a software developer, can get a real world scenario view of how it performs. The reason I didn't go for the beefier M2 Pro Mac Mini is the same reason I didn't go for the M2 Pro or M2 Max MacBook Pro. I already have a great machine here. So maybe if I have to for my business, if I have to expand the team for whatever reason, right, later this year, who knows, I might consider it then. If you're looking for a new laptop right now, I'd strongly recommend that you start looking at the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros because the prices are coming down and they are still amazing machines. No need to panic. Hope to see you soon.